Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today we have another positive input ventilation system to install, so PIV. This one's from Neuer. It's one with a heater model and it's specific for two-story and under dwellings. So there are different models that you can get if you're using a three-story building and also if you want the extra NOx filters. So it's important to have a look around and make sure you're selecting the right model for your home. You can also get them without heaters, but I wouldn't recommend using those. We'll have a quick look at the instruction manual now, and then we'll jump out to site and see this one going in. I just wanted to very briefly show you what is supposed to happen during the course of an installation. Okay, so you actually get a very detailed instruction manual from Neuer. So this is the Dry Eco Heat HC, and it is RF enabled for the hall and heating controls, although we do not have that for this particular installation. Um, it tells you here that the personal protective equipment of the installer, so it's even giving you basics there of what you should use, so gloves, safety glasses, face masks, steel toes. It explains a little bit about what the product does and some of the uses of it, how the um, input of the temperature for the heater can be adjusted from minimum to maximum and what that means. Also positioning of the diffuser, making sure that you keep a meter away from smoke alarms, and we'll mention that out during the install as well. And also using air dams based on the speed settings from the walls. Obviously the way the timbers run in your landing space are probably gonna dictate where these are gonna to have to be installed. So having an understanding of the air dams is gonna be useful later on. So familiarize yourself with this section, and it shows you in a little graphic there what that means. Um, so that's a nice bit of information. To put in there, it tells you in the loft space to check that your water tanks are covered and sealed, pipes are lagged, all extract fans are going to outside and not just blowing into the loft, the loft hatch is sealed, any holes coming through into the loft from light fittings, so spotlights, pendants are all sealed, that any flues or chimneys aren't leaking into the loft space either. If there's any doubt, you need to advise the homeowner and make sure that remedial action is taken before you proceed with the installation. And then it's the case of mounting it, so you can um, suspend them, which is the recommended method. I would suggest basically because it reduces the noise and vibration. But if you wish, you can get the um, anti-vibration mounted system. But even so, this tends to result in more noise in my experience than just using the suspended method. We've started to use grip up wire to help um, ensure longevity. They do come with a string cord for hanging them up. And that's what I'm going to use in this video, because if you're going to be attempting this yourselves, this is kind of the kit that comes. So I wanted to demonstrate it clearly on the install that we're doing today. But you can use a gripple wire. It's basically a metal cord that can give a longer lasting, I guess, solution. Having said that, we've installed lots of these in the past with the cords and there's never been an issue. They stay up just fine. So the anti-vibration kit explains a bit about that there. It gives it its product code for if you are wanting to use it explains about the fixing method for that. Uh, the electrical installation here, it tells you about the connections and making sure that if you're using a timer or something that might be regularly switched, you don't do it basically, because it can reset the thermal cutout when maybe that shouldn't be happening. You get a pre-wired power supply cable. Uh, and again, we'll show this during the installation and it gives its consumption here. So 1.6 watts per minute, 15.3 watt max up to 422 watts with the heater at full load on a 3 amp fuse. And important to note that that heater isn't consistently running, it kind of pulses on and off. Um, it's not a dead load all of the time. So yeah, it's it's one of those where it is going to increase obviously the electrical consumption of a home, but the payback of that is you can actually reduce your heating bill conversely, and um, equally you are reducing any damage to the property that condensation and mold could cause, so it's well worth Going forward with it after the survey determines it's required. See here how it wants a two pole isolator. They do come with a one amp, uh, sorry, a three amp fuse that is just a flick in and out jobby. There's no switch on it. We usually replace them for a switched option. I think the reason it comes unswitched if it's going into rental property, it reduces the prospect of someone going in and turning it off. I'm not a fan of that anyway. If people want to switch it off, they should be able to. So we will fit a local isolator with a switch and the fuse in that. And it also helps us comply with this aspect of the installation requirements rather than having to put a separate isolator alongside that fuse. Equally, if you're going into a three-story property, you need to be aware that you want a smoke or carbon monoxide alarm depending on 
the installation that it's going into that will automatically shut this down upon activation. It's actually a requirement in building regs, so make sure you are looking at this. It tells you that in the instruction manual as well, and it gives you an option for some of these that have the remote relay bases to help switch and shut this down if it was be needed. Then goes on to talk about the controls and the thermostat temperature, uh, adjusting it fully clockwise and anti-clockwise to set it where you want it. And again, that's one for the user to really do. It will increase or decrease electrical consumption based on the setting you select. Uh, it goes on here, the operating mode, so you can change it for in summer when it'll shut down for certain temperatures. We just leave it in default. It seems to be the best way, but there are some other options here and it explains how you can change it. You can get the hall controls, so if you want to boost it or set the heater to its auto mode or turn it off entirely, it can all be controlled from a little wireless switch that you can place somewhere local to the um, PIV, so you can activate it without having to remove the grill and start messing around with the buttons under the grill plate. So there is that option there as well. You can put a humidity sensor onto it, which can live um, near a bathroom, for example. So if you want it to boost up, if it senses humidity, there is those options. And again, fairly easy to wire in, and it explains all of that in the instructions. So we're gonna jump out to site now and we'll press on with the installation. You can see how we get on. If you've got any questions about the installation manual or the instructions, drop them in the comments below and I will try and help if I can. There is also two other videos I've put on this channel for Neuer positive input ventilation units. So you can go and check those on out as well. They're from a couple of years ago, different loft spaces with different um, parts of the survey. Again, just point of note, make sure you're covering off all the basics first. So the loft's well insulated that you've got trickle vents to windows if possible and also you've got extractors to kitchens and bathrooms that the doors are have an adequate gap underneath them for airflow to happen naturally if the doors are closed that's a common question i get asked if you keep the doors shut will this work it will but you need to make sure there is airflow underneath them typically around 10 mil or so above the finished floor level so that air can circulate so there's all those things you need to check as well and that the loft space is ventilated itself so you want it sealed from the house but good ventilation from outside. So soffits have grills in, or the roof tiles have the vent plates in to let air through, or there's um, air bricks in any gable wall ends, just to make sure there's a natural flow of air up there. And that's because you want to be drawing in that fresh air from outside to filter it, slightly warm it, and then inject it into the property to lower the humidity level. That's the basic principle of how these work. If you don't do the survey quite right, and those things aren't in place, you won't get the best results from installing these. So it's well worth making sure you are doing that. Last little tip before we get to the install, let's jump out to site and take a look. Okay, so first things first, on the landing space, we need to determine a suitable position for the grill plate. It needs to be accessible for the user, so they're not having to get steps out and dangle over the stairs. This is quite a small ceiling space, so we are a little bit limited, and we kind of have to work with what we've got. There is a nice position between that ceiling pendant light and the wall space there that runs in line with the existing joists, because we also don't want to be hacking into the ceiling structure to fit these. The only real consideration is the location of that smoke alarm, because we do have to keep a meter away from those, so we'll have to measure and make sure that is the case. Up in the loft, get yourself set up with some nice lighting and locate the middle of the plasterboard between the timbers. You can use references from below. So in this case, we know where that pendant is so we can work from that. Also have a quick check around the loft while you're up there to make sure there's no wildlife such as wasps nests or birds flapping around and that the survey is in line with expectations. In this case, we can use the template that comes in the kit, the cardboard pop out from the box mark around and ensure you cut a suitable hole for the grill plate to fit through. We cut from above, you can cut from below if you would rather, but it's just easier to mark and work more comfortably. We use a ply spacer as well. This just helps us fix the grill plate nice and firmly onto the ceiling below to avoid any prospects of dust working the way out onto the landing ceiling and away into the property. At that stage with the grill fitted from below, you can then fit the heater plate into the top of the PIV connect the hoses and position the PIV unit itself where you want it. In this case, we've gone for a suspended system. You can get the anti-vibration kits as we covered at the start of this video, but we find they tend to be much more quiet when you use the suspending cord. We also have a local isolator here. We still need to label that, that it's got a three amp fuse and it controls the PIV. 
This just gives anybody coming to work on the system an easy way to isolate everything before they come into close proximity of it. And the filters are on there, ready and clean for operation. The grill plate itself has the buttons underneath so you can adjust the speed of the PIV between one and six. Obviously at speed six, it's producing more airflow than at speed one. So there is a slight hum to it, the faster it gets. And I'll go quiet and let you listen to that in just a little while. But the heater here can be adjusted as well between the set point of five and 15 degrees. So you can have that control from underneath on the landing space itself, which is very handy for operators of these systems. We do need to make sure that we are at least a meter away from that smoke alarm. In this case, we're 1130 mils. So just far enough away. If that was to be a concern, you can use the air dams to stop the airflow being pushed over towards the smoke detector. And that's just to stop any dust from being blown in the direction of the smoke detector and stopping it from working. Also based on the speed setting, there are required distances from walls as well. And again, you can use the air dams if you fall within those set requirements. But in this case, we're an ample distance away while we're at speed four. We've got the QR code on the product there, which links back to our internal software system for any engineers who come to work on this in the future. So I hope you found that video useful and saw the basic principles of how we install these PIVs. Important to note that in terms of the electrical work, you should consult with an electrician and make sure that that is done correctly. We'd always advise going back to the consumer unit when possible, but you can power these from a local lighting circuit as an example. And sometimes that has benefits that you're more likely to realize when the lighting circuit's gone into a fault because the lights don't work. Than if a PIV had stopped working due to a fault in the system. You know, it could be some number of days before that was picked up upon when the condensation started to reappear. So there are some benefits to doing that. And equally, both ways have pros and cons. There's no right and wrong to that, but get that expert advice from a local electrician who will have been able to consider your electrical system and determine if the additional load and methods are acceptable. So make sure you do that. The rest is fairly straightforward. It's a case of hanging it from a solid structure in the loft space, making sure if you can, you try and elevate it to get some of that solar gain. I'm not sure on the principle of how that works and if there is actually much of a benefit in a UK loft space, but it's worth considering. And also that all your openings coming into the loft are well sealed, the loft hatch is well sealed, good ventilation in there. Basics are covered through the property, such as insulation to wall cavities and loft spaces, trickle vents in windows, extractor fans to bathrooms and kitchens, and there's a good prospect of airflow around the home. Now, I would always recommend trying to set these to a reasonable speed when they first go in, especially if you've had issues with condensation. So with that property, we left it set to a speed four, when I think in the long term, speed three would be adequate. It's just to really give it a little boost and drive out any moisture that may be present in the building as quickly as possible. The owner and occupier was happy with the noise coming out of it. It was virtually silent anyway. And the heater we left set to the midpoint. We're kind of in the peak of winter now. And again, that's user preference, setting it to an air temperature that you're happy with. You will notice a slight chill if you stand directly in and around the PIV, even in the maximum heater setting in the middle of winter. It shouldn't be to the point it's making you shiver, but it will be a notice difference, notable difference in the air temperature. But again, conversely, keeping that pressure on the warm air, you know, forcing it to mix and circulate around the house, you can find that your heating system runs left off less often. In my own home, which is about 20 years old or so, I certainly noticed that the gas bill dropped when the PIV went in, where the electric bill rose ever so slightly. And that is a consideration now, obviously, as electric rates are climbing ever higher week by week. Additional loads on your installation are gonna cost you more money. So make sure you do factor that in. They are pretty low consumption anyway, but it will still add to the electricity bill. So something to be aware of. You're not talking mega bucks, but it will be there in the background, consistently running and blowing that air in. And when it's cold up in the loft, the heater will be running as well, pulsing on and off. So there is a cost associated with it. And that will vary based on your electricity um, supply arrangement, um, what your supply cost is from your 
supply yeah so it will vary from person to person there's no set rule of thumb but again in the instruction manual it'll give you a cons consumption sheet so you can see exactly what it is you're going to use and work that out for yourself uh, and otherwise i hope you've enjoyed this video if you've got any questions or comments please do drop them in below i'll try and answer them like i said there's two other piv videos on my channel with a load of questions that have been asked in those already and the answers are in there already so if you want to click off through my channel the past videos i think it was a year or two ago they started there's two of them just search for mark allison piv they should come up and if you've got any questions hopefully they've already been answered in there but i'm happy to do it all again on this video should you wish ask away thank you for watching and i will catch you on the next one